Hey guys, today we're driving the 2024 Nissan Sentra SR. Nissan has made a few changes to this new 2024 Sentra for a mid-cycle refresh. They've updated the front and rear bumpers, headlights, added some features in the interior, and improved fuel economy, as well as given us an updated continuously variable transmission. Let's walk you around the Sentra. We'll talk about what it's been like to live with this week, and then we'll take it for a drive and give you guys some driving impressions. So the Sentra starts at around $24,000. I don't have a Monroni on this exact car, so I don't know pricing on this test model today, but once I do get that info, I'll put that in the description for you guys. You can see some of the visual changes here. This thing looks pretty good still. If you guys have seen any of our older Sentra videos from when this came out a couple years ago, we've always been really impressed with this car. It offers pretty good value for the price point. This has a ton of great features inside. It's got heated steering wheel, heated seats, a 360 cam, adaptive cruise control, standard, all this stuff in the Sentra is really makes really good value. Reasonably spacious interior too. Here's what the back seat looks like. I like this contrast orange stitching. I'm five foot 10. This is my driving position and I fit pretty comfortably back here. About an inch, inch and a half of headroom above my head. Nissan always sits the rear passengers up a little bit higher than those front passengers, just so you can see over. It reduces headroom slightly, but you do get a nice view over those front seats and makes the cabin feel a little bit more open, a little bit more airy in here. Very nice looking interior in the center of physical controls and buttons for just about every function. CarPlay Android Auto is a wired connection. We have a Bose sound system and just a nicely equipped car for under 30 grand. One USB port back here. Let's see what trunk space looks like. A lot of room in the back of the Sentra. Wide, big opening. Compact spare tire too with a jack and tool kit. Like to see that. You can fold down those rear seats. 60-40 split for a little bit more space. We are riding on 18 inch wheels with 215 45R18 Kinergy GT tires from Hankook. Here's a look at that updated front end. Can't really tell that much of a difference if I'm being honest, but it's still a pretty attractive looking car. The center is powered by a two liter inline four cylinder that makes 149 horsepower. Oh, wrong lever to unpop that fuel door. <laughs> Regular fuel, of course. Very fuel efficient, 30 miles to the gallon in the city, 38 on the highway. This week, I've been averaging mid thirties easily. 149 horsepower. This isn't a terribly heavy car, just over 3000 pounds. So it gets up and goes around town. The CVT has been retuned and redesigned so that it's not revving out as high. It's actually a very smooth transmission. This engine can be a little bit gruff and rough and unrefined sounding on cold starts, but otherwise, once it warms up, it's pretty nice. Of course, we have Nissan's zero gravity seats, which are quite comfortable. They're not as plush and comfortable as maybe something out of the Ultima, but overall, I think they feel pretty good. Nice storage here, cup holders, really big, deep center console, place to put your phone, no wireless charging in this car. We also get the addition of auto stop start in the 2024 Nissan Sentra. Here's your heated seat controls, heated steering wheel, all your climate buttons, physical knobs, dials, love to see that. These kind of sporty air vents right here. Here's your sunroof operation. These visors slide, that's good. Little mirror, lots of tilting, telescoping adjustment from the steering wheel. We have a motorized seat here for the driver. 
with lumbar adjustment, backrest, and manual sliders here for the passenger. Materials all feel very nice. The leathers, the stitching on here doesn't really feel that different from some of Nissan's higher end stuff into the $40,000 and $50,000 price point. Overall, quite like this interior. We have an eco mode here. That's about it as far as drive modes go. Buttons to adjust the gauge cluster brightness, reset our trip, pop the trunk. No seat memory settings here. The driver's window is auto up down. All the others you have to hold. Blind spot monitoring right there is a little light. I'd like to see that. Here's what our 360 and reverse camera look like. Nice to have that in a car at this price point though. A little bit low resolution, kind of, uh, kind of distorted. That's okay though, it gets the job done. This infotainment is pretty straightforward. Typical Nissan, kind of a smaller screen, but again, it shows you what you need to with CarPlay or Android Auto. It's responsive, it's quick. You've got a quick access button there for the camera view. You can see forward, back, audio shortcut buttons too that'll take you to whatever you're playing in CarPlay or Android Auto or uh, satellite radio, whatever you're listening to. And you've even got a button here to change your brightness. All very nice. All right, let's take the Sentra for a drive and see what it's like on the road. Moving object detection giving us a little beep there. This is a super smooth car to drive when you're just kind of putzing around town at lower speeds. The engine barely crests 2,000 RPM. That's actually pretty nice. Ride is comfortable. There's a little bit of noise over bumps from these lower profile tires on 18 inch wheels. And the suspension could be a little bit more refined, but it's comfortable for the price point. It's pretty amazing what this car offers. It's even kind of fun to drive around corners. It handles surprisingly well. With only 149 horsepower, there's not a ton of power here. But again, I think there is enough. This never really feels too slow or too sluggish. Zero to 60 right there, that felt great actually. Steering is quite good in the Sentra. Weights up nicely, feels very direct. There's stop start engaging. Coming off the line, it seems to start up pretty quickly. Some shifts there from the CVT. All very smooth, all very fluid. It's kind of strange having all these new continuously variable transmissions doing gear shifts. You don't really need to do it, but I kind of like it. It breaks up the monotony and the droning sound that we used to associate with CVTs. Again, pretty responsive transmission. No paddle shifters or real manual control on this, but you don't really need it. Foot down, engine revs up gives you power when you want it. Apologies, my backpack's rolling around back here. Trying to secure that. There we go. Ergonomics in here are fantastic. Love these steering wheel controls. Super easy to set your cruise control, change your following distance. No lane centering or steering assist here in this SR trim. But we do have lane keep assist, which I've turned off. Got a few extra settings here in this digital view. See tire pressures, fuel economy, speed. One complaint that I have is that when you're driving, and let's say you want to see your digital speed readout, and then you engage adaptive cruise control, it'll put you in this driving assistance menu, and you always have to switch back out of that. Handling. That was impressive. I was talking about something completely different around that corner, but 
the front end of this car has so much traction. Part of that is down to, this has a dual pinion steering rack. Basically, it allows those front wheels to kind of move independently. And the way I understand it is that it really doesn't have a scrub radius. And as a result, it allows this car to corner incredibly well for a front wheel drive car. Let's hit that corner one more time, and I'll show you guys what I mean. Road noise, NVH, not too bad at speed. We'll slow down a little bit for this Grand Marquis up here. All right, brakes, turning in. I mean, just really impressive cornering capability here. That's amazing. <laughs> Brakes feel fine. A little bit of tire noise from these hand cooks today. I'm not sure I would choose 18 inch wheels as my top choice for my Nissan Sentra, but it probably does improve performance around a corner. They're just a little bit louder, a little bit noisier of a tire than I would like. Pretty bumpy section of road here. The center's handling it in stride. No issues with ride quality, ride comfort, lower speeds, higher speeds. It all feels pretty buttoned down. Again, only complaint is just a little bit more tire noise over bumps than I would like. While we're cruising here, before we get on the highway, let's go in and do a quick test of this Bose sound system. We've got steering wheel controls here for volume and track selection. price point, the bow sounds pretty good in here. All right, we'll get onto the highway, see what this sounds like at speed. You can easily turn off stop start right there with the button. That's good to see. Yeah, like I said at the beginning, when you're not hammering this car around for entertainment factor in a YouTube video, it's very quiet. The engine doesn't rev up very high. The CVT is very, very smooth. When you're just cruising on the highway, 70 miles an hour, it sits very comfortably at 2,000 RPM, maybe a little bit under, 19, 1800 or so. Adaptive cruise control has worked quite well this week, even in traffic, something that I find myself using pretty often. You have three following distance settings. The closest distance feels about right, and the farthest setting, the third setting, is not too far away, but still maintains a good distance. It blends speed differentials nicely, doesn't slam on the brakes. I don't feel like I'm holding up traffic behind me when I'm using it. Aside from tire noise, not a whole lot of wind noise here either. A little bit quieter than the Honda Civic, I'd say. But 
does eco mode do? Probably just kind of dulls our throttle response. Yeah, engine isn't revving up. Not as a responsive, not as responsive of a drive mode. I just can't get over how well this center handles. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> Visibility is good too. Pretty low belt line to these doors. I can see over the hood very well. car to drive and live with. Seats are comfortable. It's very, very fuel efficient. Pretty good features in here. And hopefully Nissan has done some work to the CVT to make it a little bit more reliable than Sentra's of old. I haven't heard of any issues with the newer cars, though it could be a little bit too early to tell. But overall, I think one of the better cars in this segment. It's affordable. It's fun to drive. It offers good value, good tech. All the integrations here are really pretty well done. It offers a simple, easy to use interior. Nothing in here is distracting or detracting from the driving experience, which I appreciate. Yeah, good marks for the Nissan Sentra. We'll just pull off here briefly and we'll wrap up the video right here. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Take care. Oh, and it has remote start too, which on these colder winter mornings here in Southeast Michigan has been very nice.